So Joe Biden went on a trip to Saudi Arabia. You've probably seen a fair bit about it these days because it's been pretty heavy in the news cycle, especially over the last day or so. Now, this trip had been planned at least for a few weeks and likely for a few months, and it had a couple different claimed purposes. The first one was to improve relations between the countries of Saudi Arabia and Israel, as Israel is starting to become rather diplomatic and actually get on with some of its neighboring Arab states. It was also intended to build up and propagate this idea of an Arab alliance against Iran, which is not a new thing either. And then Biden and his administration also intended to speak a little bit about the war in Yemen, which is obviously headed up by Saudi Arabia and that coalition, and to try and bring it to some sort of more peaceful side because an awful lot of civilians are being killed. And then finally, the US was also intending apparently to address the human rights issues in Saudi Arabia. Now, in reality, this is mostly nonsense because the real reason Biden went to Saudi Arabia is, of course, oil, and it's all about oil. This was basically America saying to Saudi Arabia, please, please, please produce and sell more oil. We need more supply to drive prices down, to stop the world from crashing into a recession and to help tame inflation. Now, this is actually a rather embarrassing thing for Biden to have to do. Over the last few years, and in particular during his election campaign to become president, he spoke against Saudi Arabia an awful lot. He said a multitude of different things, including the fact that he was going to make Saudi Arabia into a pariah state because of its poor history with human rights, and in particular the murder of Khashoggi, which was ordered by MBS, the man who basically is the head of state for Saudi Arabia. Biden had gone so far as to call MBS an actual murderer, and in short, he was very outspoken against Saudi Arabia and against America's alliance with that country. Now, unfortunately, that was quite a naive thing for Biden to do because geopolitics is notoriously nuanced and very, very complicated. And unfortunately, there is a reason that America and the UK and a bunch of other Western states are and have been allies with Saudi Arabia for decades now. Now, Biden had been trying to save a lot of face by claiming that there were other reasons for him going to Saudi Arabia. He also claimed that he was going to a summit of Arab states and that Saudi Arabia just so happened to be the focus point of that summit where everyone was meeting. But this was all just him trying to save face. At the end of the day, he had to swallow his pride, go and speak to them himself, show himself with the media circus behind him that he was making an effort. Now, what was said in particular is right here. It's in Saudi Arabia, but it's not about Saudi Arabia. And there's no commitment that is being made, or I'm not even sure. I guess I will see the king and the crown prince, but that's, that's not the meeting I'm going to. They'll be part of a much larger meeting. Now, as of a few days ago, we know that this isn't really the case and that there was a lot more than that. And the focus really was on MBS and Biden in particular. Now, Saudi Arabia and their officials were rather unhappy about this. Relations between the two states have been strained already before getting there, and they saw this as a slight. They saw Biden making a big point about this not being about Saudi Arabia, and they obviously knew that it was, and they didn't like that at all. So relations went into this really strained, and Biden wasn't on strong footing here. Now, we actually touched on this story about a week ago prior to Biden going over there, and we basically established that actually, yes, it would be nice if Biden were successful, if he could manage to get Saudi Arabia to increase their oil output, but it's very unlikely, and we shouldn't really expect anything to come from this. The Biden administration knew this as well, and before they went over there, they came out and gave a press release where they basically said, don't expect, even if this is an incredibly successful mission and we achieve everything we want, don't expect gas prices to fall immediately because it just doesn't work like that. Still though, they were very optimistic and it did seem like at least some kind of progress was being made. Biden and MBS spoke together in front of all the cameras. The administrations obviously spoke to each other as well. Well-renowned diplomats who would actually be doing the discussing and the negotiating were doing their negotiating. Biden was photographed fist bumping MBS and that was great press for MBS and he was no doubt very happy about it. It seemed like this was the start of the better relationship between the two states with that getting off on the right track. It seemed like actually the Biden administration thought that their negotiations had worked. They thought that their delegation going over to Saudi Arabia itself being there in person had worked and that more oil was produced until we saw this happen here as it announced to increase the level of maximum sustainable production capacity to more than 13 million barrels. Beyond that, the kingdom will not have any further production capacity. Now, 
Now I'll explain what just happened there because that is a little bit confusing, but there's an audio delay between what they're hearing and what we're hearing, and they heard that news before us. And if you go back and rewatch that clip, you see there's a visible shock from all of them there. They heard something they weren't expected to hear, and the important information that they were shocked by was that Saudi Arabia would not be increasing their production at all. Now this is a bit of a kick in the teeth then, especially if they'd been assured in advance that this was going to happen. Now this is a very common thing that we see in geopolitics. If you remember back a few months regarding the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Putin said time after time after time that no invasion of Ukraine was planned and that it was never going to happen. And then one evening at about 2 a.m., the invasion of Ukraine happened overnight. We also saw very similar things happen to Macron and Putin, with Putin making loads of assurances towards Macron, telling him that everything's okay behind closed doors, and then going back on his word and embarrassing Macron in front of the rest of the world. This is probably just politics at work, but in reality, it has a massive impact for the world of finance because there is going to be no increased oil supply from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which is basically the largest supplier in the region and most of the world as well, and there will be a price impact on oil as a result of that. As I speak right now actually, oil prices are already up by about 8% since this has happened. Brent crude oil is back at $106 a barrel. WTI crude is back at $102 a barrel, and this is a complete reversion to what we'd seen over the past few weeks, as oil prices have been falling on a couple of assumptions, one of them being that Biden's delegation, that his trip to Saudi Arabia, would at least be slightly successful and help to increase the supply of oil and thus bring down the price. Now, what happened behind the scenes is anyone's guess really, but it seems like Saudi Arabia wanted this relationship reset and they got that good press for this relationship reset with Biden in advance, with them speaking, with them being on good terms, with the fist bump and things like that. And MBS decided that actually it wasn't really necessary for him to give the US what they wanted in return either, because for Biden to now go back on what he said now would be another massive embarrassment. And that does seem to be supported by what is being put out by the White House as well. Biden very notably didn't make any kind of mention of Saudi Arabia's awful history and its record on human rights, but the White House has put out a press release indicating that he did by editing a transcript to be untruthful to what was actually said. Basically, this is very embarrassing. Biden put his morals and his integrity into question to try and increase the supply of oil for the world, to try and bring the price of it down. But in the end, he did it all for no gain because his delegation was unsuccessful. Now, where do we actually go from here? Well, the oil price chaos that we've seen for about six months now is going to continue. The only real long-term solution to bring oil prices down, again, over the long term, is for the West to become energy independent, to produce more oil, more natural gas, more energy sources itself. But that is a very controversial topic with about half of the population in almost every major Western state being fundamentally opposed to that kind of action. So it's a very difficult thing to get through politically. There also isn't really a short-term fix here. Getting Saudi Arabia to produce more oil would be a short-term fix, but it seems pretty clear at this point that that just isn't feasible, and it takes time for the West up to build up its own supply capacity, time which we don't really have. Another solution to this oil price hike that we've seen over recent months is that if a worldwide recession comes about, the likes of which we've seen in 2008, well, the prices of oil will crash because demand for oil will crash as well. And yes, that probably will happen at some point, but we are months away from that point, probably six months or maybe even more. And when that does happen, well, there'll just be another massive, even bigger problem for everyone to deal with. The Biden administration and Biden in particular is really struggling with awful ratings, awful approval ratings right now. They have their midterms coming up and the Democrats are not looking too hot. So we should expect some more kind of intuitive, aspirational actions to come out, even if they don't come out successful. This government needs to act to try and remain in power. And so we shouldn't expect them to just sit back and get complacent with how it is right now. Now. We could see some really rather radical actions coming out regarding oil supply and energy capacity in general, and so it is definitely a space to pay attention to. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to bless the YouTube algorithm. It really does help. If you want to join our exclusive community, then check out our Patreon. You get access to our Discord server and extra content like access to my portfolio and buy and sell alerts for all my own investments. 
Also make sure to check out the link in the description to Masterworks. It can help you protect your portfolio against market turmoil through fractional shares of art from world famous artists. Art has historically proven to be uncorrelated to the markets, so it's a really valuable resource with the markets falling every week. There's also a link in the description to iTrust Capital, which helps you to invest in crypto through your tax advantaged IRA, which could literally save you thousands. If you, like me, think crypto going down is a buy-in opportunity, then now is the perfect time to join iTrust Capital. Thank you all for watching. Stay stoic. Until next time.